then I think we're finally good to go. How's everybody doing? Uh, how's how's the last two weeks been for everybody? HB and Mark, who I am with. Why don't you go first, <laughs> HB? Uh, the last two weeks? The last... Oh, wait. You yeah. missed the introductions, Matt. Yeah. Uh, no, I did. I just did it a different way. Oh, okay. You see what I did Fair there? Because I, I caught yes. myself. Yeah. I did not see. Yes. Uh, I am HB. And he is Mark. Uh, no, it, it's been interesting two weeks. I've uh, been working on some new stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think I can talk about any of, any of it, what I've been working on. Top right? secret, right? Yeah, I don't think I can talk about anything. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> I mean, some of it's going to be coming in the fall. Hopefully. Some of it, and some of it is a little, a, a little bit more longer term as well, yeah. like, like even further ahead. So, yeah. No, it's been inter- interesting because working on on new systems is always fun uh, i love that part i love the game design part of my work so that's that's great it's it's been a fun weird couple of weeks i think yeah job wise for me uh because it's a little a lot of planning and, and stuff yeah i mean i can talk a little bit about some of the challenges on my end because i think it touches upon some of um foxhole foxhole's like the the, the feedback from the community mm. right and and sort of want to share let you guys know that um I, I i'm sharing um the concerns and challenges right mm. um uh basically on one hand i have been working on moving the pieces that are needed to be moved to make sure that um the all the big things we want to do before the end of the year are actually are actually going to get done, right? Because mm-hmm. some of these things are so big that we have to work on them now. Like it's not like we don't work on things and then they come out next month. We yeah. have to work on them half a year in advance, um, especially when or they're or more, especially when they're of this scope. Um, so on one hand, I'm trying to do this long term stuff, but on the other hand, um, we have all you know. Obviously, Foxhole has gone through a lot of change in Update 26. Some of it's worked well. Some of it we're working through the challenge of. <laughs> um, and I think sort of to summarize um, um, some of the issues that we're seeing is Update 26, we introduced a lot of player agency. We introduced a lot of freedoms. We re- removed a lot of the safety nets. We mm-hmm. removed the port bases. Uh, we made the resource locations more interesting. And we knew we would not come out of this um, unscathed, unscathed, right? <laughs> Literally, when we were talking about this stuff, we were like, okay, we know that this is removing the safety net is going to have some consequences. But we were like, you know what? Like, in order to not just spin our wheels and go in circles, in order to, to see some, some sort of progress forward, for better or worse, let's take the risk and make these mm-hmm. changes, right? So what we're seeing right now is, yes... Some of the wars are shorter um, than we'd like. And yes, um, you know, some of the end game content like tanks aren't being surfaced as much. Um, we, we share your pain in that. Like, like we, you know, we don't sit back and like enjoy what's happening and being like, yeah, we want to sabotage our own game. Like, like we're stressed out, probably more stressed out than you guys are um, in, in, in trying to like resolve these issues. And we would like nothing more then to make sure that we can keep a lot of the good stuff that we got in update 26 and also resolve some of these issues. And it's not going to happen right away. Like I'd be lying if I said this next war is just going to be magically, everything's magically going to be fixed, right? It's not. Um, we're going to make a couple of tweaks um, that might that might help slightly um, in helping the game reach... Uh, helping the next war reach the end game. But, you know, I, I'm putting a huge like, asterisk on it it's it, it's a very it's a nudge right uh-huh. um it, yeah it's, it's very good chances you know it's not gonna it's not gonna have a high impact as we'd like but it's a nudge and also to address some of the um the the player um the effects of uh the factions uh population sizes not not um being like equal uh Again, putting in some things to nudge in the right direction there. There's only so much we can do in these hot fixes. Where we're not pushing on a huge update. You guys, uh, I just want you guys to understand that we're only able to like tweak a couple of knobs. Um, we, we can't make drastic changes. So we're going to do what we can. And we'll see what happens in this next war. And then we're, you know, we're going to learn something. And then hopefully um, in the next 
few actual actual updates, we'll be able to make um, larger strides there. But mm -hmm. you know, we definitely you know hear you guys on all these concerns, and 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 we're you know we're stressed out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and if it could be as simple as fixed, we would have already done it. But obviously, it's not that simple. And like you, you know, usually there's not the most like the first thing you think of is usually not the way to go and i think that's that's why it's difficult to combat some of the stuff it's it's uh an unenviable and uh, an unenviable challenge yeah um, but just like trust me when i say this is we work on this like i'm thinking about this stuff constantly um it's it, what keeps me up at night it's it's there's nothing in my mind so in our comms yeah. this is a constant <laughs> This is constant. The conversations mm -hmm. are constant. It's yeah. not just like, it's it's not like, oh well, the devs don't give a shit. It's like, <laughs> if only you knew. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, uh, let's move on to uh, community highlights. Yes, um, and this is the this is the the actual the big announcement uh, of today. Uh, I changed the name from community highlights snippets to preview. <laughs> It's much more elegant. I know, right? Uh, oh yeah. So community highlights. Pre uh, community highlights is a it's a blog post that happens uh, every other week, a little bit after the 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 dev stream. Uh, KFC puts together all the stuff that the community did, and then I just do a little preview with some of the stuff. But you should definitely check out the blog post if you have a chance. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, uh, Commissar Jimbo's uh, uh, journal again. Uh, it was. Uh, it was said it was by Robot Spark. That's what I got from KFC, but I got a little bit confused because I'm pretty sure that this is Commissar Jimbo's. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a really neat. Uh, I think the quality of the newspaper style of uh, art, it's really getting out. insane. It's, now we have like pictures with captions and articles and everything, and you can read the whole thing in the community highlights. Is this sort of like a like a mashup between real photo photograph and like um, like uh, act, fictional elements or like yeah that, there's there's a little bit of everything that tank looks like a warden tank but it could also be a real world um, I don't tank that's I don't think you similar. can you you can do it exactly like that particularly that's a warden tank but uh, <laughs> okay. no it's 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 it, yeah there's there's a lot of clever imagery done in this in this edition with the pictures it's it's quite neat i guess i think you guys should definitely check it out uh second thing that i thought it was really cool just a, somebody new doing more art mummy i don't think i ever seen art from this person before but i thought it was neat enough cutesy there's more stuff from them uh in the community highlights I don't think we've ever seen this particular style before. No, no, it's yeah. It reminds me of like a Maple Story kind of look. Ah, yeah, kind of does, right? Yeah, or yeah, or like a, I guess kind of like Ragnarok, but like the in-game Ragnarok yeah. stuff. But anyway, it's, it's very particular look. Yeah, I, it's it's quite neat. So I thought it was like really cool having, again, we're sometimes you see new people coming up with different styles, and that's quite neat. There's there's more than one person that we haven't seen before in the community highlights this this week. Uh, third thing I I I included because I know that you love this kind of stuff, Mark. Mm. Uh, I do. This is as, uh, this is like a Battle of Fort Friars, uh, told by Geronim. and there's like like a like a few things that tie in the whole story together. So there's the letter, there is the picture. I think that there is like also a drawing as well that was somebody done. So I think it's really cool that now it's not just, oh, it's a newspaper or mm. it's a drawing or it's a letter. Like it just, there's a whole bunch of things that all together te are telling the story of ha what happened. That is quite neat. I think you, I, I thought you would like it as well, Matt. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, check, but I'll check it out. If you have a chance, yeah. And uh, last but not least, this was really cool. Um, this was uh, Nakazaki. Uh, <laughs> our website, we know it's not... <laughs> Where we spend our energy. <laughs> yeah, it's the development time spent on the website is not exactly the highest. So a couple of people have done uh, sort of like 
how to make another take on our own website. <laughs> right. Uh, Which is an interesting thing. I wonder if this was like for a class or something. I don't know. I, I know nothing about it. KFC sent it my way, but I thought it was really neat. Like it's just, like, it's just this very dynamic and... <laughs> right. It might have been for some sort of a design class assignment. Yeah. Or maybe it was just done for fun. It yeah, it could, could have been. I mean, it, it kind of looks like UI. Like yeah. I don't even know that I've seen a website really that looks, looks very too much modern. Like this. A lot more. It, yeah, it's like it's like a, a Web 2.0 stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought it was really neat. Uh, you guys can check it out as well on. The, I don't know if it, the the website itself is available for people to check out. I don't think so because I didn't get a link from KFC. Mm. Uh, he did send me this video, uh, and I wanted so I wanted to showcase what it was, uh, but. Uh, yeah, check it out. Once again, community highlights. Uh, if you got, if you have a chance to, if you have a chance to submit anything, if you're excited, if you don't see your stuff, uh, if you don't see your stuff on the uh, on the community on the community highlight snippets, send it to KFC, send it to me, particularly to him. Uh, yeah, don't send anything to HP. Yeah, he doesn't like things being sent to him. Uh, that's <laughs> untrue. <laughs> I mean, and, and also for the record, because I just see some comments in the chat, like uh, well, none of us are web designers. Like it's not something where. Well, technically. Well, I, mean, I guess. Te- <laughs> I guess from like a, like a pure like technical perspective, sure. I used but, to be one. But, but uh, we ju- we that. just we I just hate use that so much. We just use Wix for our website. Yeah, and, yeah. and it works perfectly fine. We for don't us. want I don't to spend think, time doing that. I don't think Actually, we need something too fancy. I think it's really really cool, but. I mean, to speak to that, in general as a studio, we're a, a, a very, like, no-frills, um, put all the energy into the game type of studio. Like, like, you know, we don't have a foosball table. We you don't... keep bringing up the foosball in particular. <laughs> well, it's a symbolic, <laughs> like, to me, it's a symbol of, like, you know, um, these, these uh, like, of a distraction of of like these other yeah so like Silicon Valley like tech company sort of the, the like yeah sort of that, like, that, that, that like, um, you know you, like they want you stereotypical well yeah, it's like it's the also the mentality for. of like you know they want you to like live at work right mm-hmm. like like here's all your your home is at work and for yeah. us we're I think we're slightly unique in our industry in a sense of like we're like a no nonsense we come to work we put our heads down we work we talk to each other when we need to. Um, and then we go home and we want to make sure we have a good, uh, work life balance. Um, but we tend to be very focused when we're here, um, yeah, for the most the- part. Right. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm making it sound like our studio is really boring, but, um, but to it, be fair, this, more- is the, this, is, this is one of the few places in my life that I worked in, which I've been yelled because I haven't gone home yet, <laughs> <laughs> which is true. Yeah. I gotta actually, be honest, yeah. It's actually pretty fucking good. So if we want a foosball <laughs> table, we can get one and trade in all the other good stuff. But no, it's just like to back, back to that point is, is we, um, you know, we're, we're very no nonsense. Yeah. Um, you know, although we do still do some, we do, we do like to go out and drink and have fun though. Yeah. We have like a drink night every month and, um, we, we started, but it sort of started and stalled and hopefully starts again um, watching sci-fi movies on some Wednesdays. Oh, the game pitches was also really cool. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're hip. We're, we're cool. hip. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're cool, right? You know. Hey, guys. We, we were <laughs> until cool now. Yeah. <laughs> now we're not. And I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. We're... we're um, anyway. I was that... being sarcastic, by the way. If you <laughs> yeah, we know. No, yeah. Nobody here is hip. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna continue. We're gonna go to development updates. Yes. So, what are we working on? Um, so, the once same the, slide. The same slide, right? We, we, you know, what's cool? We actually have released all these updates. I know, right? right? I, it's not just uh, made up um, stuff on a, on some slides. <laughs> you know, we do some real work around here, right? We don't just. <laughs> write things on slides but um we have, <laughs> are you sure because <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, one more update um in the uh summer update plan and we intend to bring the harvester to that and some other features um i think uh one thing i did want to say was there there's still a lot we want to do with logi that we haven't been able to um 
to find the time yet to do in these summer updates. There was more we want to do. And I think that what's going to happen is that some of this Logi, um, more Logi changes, uh, improvements is going to spill over into the fall. And I, I know I originally said that we're going to do, um, an intelligence revamp at some point in the fall. I think that's likely going to be pushed and instead we're going to continue with some of this, um, um, Logi stuff instead. And there's also a lot of big fish to fry. Like we, you know, we've talked long time that we want to get rid of, um, the infinite spawns. Um, and there, there's just a whole bunch of other things like that, that, you know, we, we really want to, these are hard things to get done. They, they seem small, but they're, but they touch a lot of systems and we think fall is a good time to, uh, tackle some of these hard, hard issues, uh, like, like that. Um, and then, uh, and then winter, so fall, we're going to see like a midsize, probably like a midsize update, um, in September, that's gonna add some pretty, some pretty cool stuff, um, that we're going to be probably start talking about in a couple of weeks. Um, it's not going to be the scale of update 26, but I think it will, I think it's going to still be pretty exciting. Um, and obviously at the end of the year, we have a huge update planned and, um, you know, I think that's, I think that, uh, that one's really going to move the needle. Um, and, and I think we're going to see a lot of, um, really cool, uh, you know, sort of a next step of this is the new foxhole mm -hmm. <laughs> type of update, um, there. And, uh, you know, people who like, who like the building game would, will probably be really excited about what we have nice. in store for that. So, um, yeah, so. Let's get into the harvester because that's why we're all here today, right? Yeah. Talk about the harvester. Finally, after all this time. I mean, I'm just here for the memes. I don't really. You're here for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, I want to say that it's it's going to be a uh, mountain goal for Logi players. So this is not going to be, you know, it's not gonna be like a truck where it's like you're going to see them everywhere. It's going to be a uh, pretty, pretty high end, right, um, thing. But you know, one of the good things about Logi vehicles, though, is that um, even when they're rare, as we saw with the relic trucks, right? Because they're not being sent to the front line to, um, they tend to accumulate over time, right? They just get handed down because uh -huh. they only like, um, their, their lifespan is so much <laughs> larger and longer Longer because they're only in the back yeah. line, right? So, um, it's sort of, will will probably be like, you know, they're going to be really, really rare, um, super rare when they're first, um, available in the tech tree and then um and then oh speaking of the tech tree one of the things i did want to mention that's one of our goals speaking about the fall update just as a sidebar is that you know a lot of people have been talking about the tech tree and um they probably heard from us but just to sort of like make sure that it's clear our goal is is to get rid of rid of the tech tree um at least in the form that it's in right now uh and possibly even just not even having a tech tree um and that's something that we're that's one of those pro big problems I was mm -hmm. talking about that we want to solve in this fall. Right? One, of, one mm -hmm. of those fish that need to be fried. One of those big fish that have to be fried, right? So we're hungry. Yeah, can't yeah. just eat raw. Well, I guess you can. Man, can't. you know what? <laughs> I didn't even I have lunch. That metaphor is already gone. I mean, I'm hungry. I didn't have lunch yet. Gone downhill. <laughs> uh, so this, yeah, this is a mountain hard. goal. Um, it's built for collaboration. So it's you know it's built with the same goals we had in mind for like. The crane right is that we want players to be working together right it, it's not you know we could have just said hey all this is 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 just an upgrade from the sledgehammer and and then you're done right but we want it to be more than that um so there's multiple roles um one is it's a mining vehicle like what you would expect right you use it like a you know sort of it is somewhat of an upgrade to a to a sledgehammer and i'm gonna get into that one of the other things is that second role is uh to clean up a battlefield right and um this is something that i think players have been asking for for a long time and and we feel that um the the harvester is a good role for that and i want to talk about that in a bit um and then you know the other thing i want to say is that like you know there might be there there have been some other ideas floating around um internally of possible applications in the future so like the crane like the truck we like to like sort of build these things and say, Hey, maybe there's more things that can do in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's get into the, uh, 
Oh, that's a cool visual there. So that that's just sort popped of, up right away. <laughs> just popped up right away. Um, is the harvester in action? Uh, this is when it's um, mining function, right? So this is this is this animation is a demonstration of its mining functionality. Um, keep in mind that the speeds at which it's mining and things like that are um, only here for demonstration purposes. These things obviously might change um, or will change and. The two functions it has is there is a gather mode and a breakdown mode. Um, so I'll get into that. So basically the, the gather mode is just as you expect. You hold down the left mouse button, it consumes the resource nodes and it's slightly faster than a, than a sledgehammer. But it's not like crazy, it's not gonna be like significantly faster to the point where like, okay, no one even, you know, there's no point in using a sledgehammer, right? Because mm -hmm. this is, again, like we're not a fan of like, straight upgrades even though we do do that sometimes we prefer um things to work um in conjunction with each other right so um the other mode is the breakdown mode and that is holding down the right mouse button and basically what that will do is it'll break the idea that the, the the concept is that it's going to break down um the resource to help multiple players uh, work more efficiently. So what's gonna do is actually gonna spawn more nodes to increase the bandwidth of your mining, right? Um, so right now, when you work a field, like the maximum, if you have like two people, you're working at maximum efficiency. And if you add on another person, your efficiency lowers. Some, at some point, someone is just gonna be like waiting around, mm -hmm. right? So what this does is if you're working in a group and you wanna consume a field as fast as possible and you have a harvester and you use the breakdown functionality that will allow you to work maximum efficiency with more than two yeah more than two players right so it's, it really is not just this like straight upgrade but it's also like how how do you increase the effectiveness of a mining operation the group of players coming together saying we want to go do a mining operation we want the harvester to be a, a key part of that so basically it allows more people at the same time to consume that the total amount of the node faster. Exactly. But it's not adding, um, this last point here, does not increase the total amount of resources in the field, but it just increases the bandwidth. Um, so a more organized and larger <laughs> team yes. can, can, uh, can have access to that total resource faster. That's right. And one of the reasons why we're doing this, we want to encourage what we're seeing already is these mining operations, right? These these players driving driving out in like convoys, even sometimes, mm -hmm. and and going to like um, to mine a whole field. We want um, you know this to be another vehicle in that convoy, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's sort of the first functionality. The second one, which I don't think you guys were expecting, is the cleanup functionality, right? And this will allow you to clean up leftovers. Um, in a battlefield, right? So that includes uh, things like barbed wire, mines, walls, foxholes, pillboxes. Um, yeah. Basically, the big thing that a lot of you guys mess for is like, after you uh, cl claim a town as an example, there's all this leftover crap. And right now you have to use like HE grenades, you have to shoot you have them to down. You have to consume a lot of things. You have to consume to just... a lot of things just to get this done, right? But what we're doing is like we're adding this functionality to the harvester. Like you can, um, you can, someone that wants to clean up a town afterwards can drive a harvester around and use it to clean up the mess. So you can yep. have a, a cleaner base, right? And just to sort of make that a bit more, uh, a bit more, a bit more rewarding, right? A nominal amount of scrap um, is going to be harvested, mm -hmm. right? So you know you're sort of not just doing this. You know it's it's already kind of like a, not necessarily the most fun job in the world, but you know, you're going to get something back from it. Um, and uh, we're really excited about this second functionality because, you know, again, we always want the harvester to be special, right? Mm -hmm. We always want it to be more than what the basic functionality is going to be. So um, that sort of, sort of wraps up uh, all we have to say for now about the harvester. And we are aiming to get that into update 28. So nice. Um, something to look forward to. Q&A. All right, well, this, as you can see, is gonna be a little bit of a shorter stream. However, uh, as you guys ask questions, uh, I'm going to uh, start with one that I actually got ahead of time. Um, oh, that's a first. From 
EJDVI lab. Is that last? Okay, no, the last is the date. I copied it, it pasted weird. Um, do you think that one person should be able to destroy a town hall instead of a squad? Uh, no. I, I think that... Um, I, oh, well, let me, let me dig into that question a bit. Um, I think that, in general, some of the things that you're able to do as a single person um, is very disproportionate with reality and um we are intent on um changing that and i think going to you know i knew there was a list of the big fish mat that we want to fry in the fall update and and i'm just i want to list them out when i talked about it but I, they're all starting to come back to me now and one of those things is um we want to make the uh we want to revamp the inventory system so um a lot of the ridiculous um silly things that you see happening like someone um you know being able to carry a ton of like explosives um sneak into the back line and you know like you know carrying a hundred frags right it just makes no sense right mm -hmm. uh, or carrying a hundred he grenades um which we addressed in the last update um or you know even carry like nine satchel charges it's been unrealistic right um or like how many like mortar tubes you know, like list goes on, right? Yeah. Like, like, you know, this is very unrealistic that someone, that one player can go and take down a town hall. So um, uh, we want to make sure that things are some, it's, we know it's a video game and, you know, we always make sure that, you know, we don't go too overboard, but to some degree, we want it to make sense and not, I think to the point of it, our thing is not to be 100% accurate, but to make sure it isn't silly, right? Uh -huh. And like one person sneaking into a town um, in the back line and flipping it and moreover turning, like changing the hometown or doing some sort of really weird like, influence like that on the war, to us is in the side of it being really silly. And, and, we're, and we're, we're very intent on, on, um, on fixing that, mm -hmm. right? So, so the short answer is no. We don't think that someone should be able to do that. But the long answer is that, you know, that extends to just beyond just the town hall and mm -hmm. more of these other magical, silly things, right? Uh, 3SP Mini Bar asks, is it possible that the faction can decide where to place a start base uh, when they have control over several towns in a hexagon? Yeah, yeah. So that's... Um, like the whole faction votes for something? Or like that, that's actually the follow-up question. Oh, I just wanted yeah, to keep it yeah, simple. Yeah, we're, we're... We... So, I guess, like, we like that, right? And we think that that, that, that solution makes total sense. Um, we don't like the fact that this, like, you know, you're sort of at the, um, at the mercy of the game to determine where... Um, your home bases, right? How we end up addressing that is to be seen because there's a lot of corner cases to think about, like what if someone wants, you know, someone wants a grief or, you know, people are in like a disagreement and things like that. Um, uh, but we, we, we want to give players, I guess the short answer is we want to make, give players more control over that um, because right now it, it's frustrating when um, when your home base moves to a location um, that uh, that is unexpected. One one of those tweaks that we're we're actually making um, for this hotfix for tomorrow's wars is to make sure there is a bias when selecting hometowns um, or home home bases uh, to to the victory points. So at least. In the short run, um, you know, if your victory if your victory town is destroyed, like if it's sniped or something um, at some point, and then you rebuild it, it will return back. Uh, it return the home base back to that victory point, so you're not sort of like stuck in, you know, your 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 home base being far off, far away on the other side of the map. Which, you know, again goes back to that like should should, should something like you know, sniping a town hall have have such a big influence. Um, you know, it's this one of those things where we we're looking into all these like. It's kind of funny. I feel like after we removed the port bases 
And after we, we added in all of these, these really cool things, then we're starting to sort of like, you know, the first war was sort of everything was new. So it was very mm-hmm. difficult to find all the, the crevices of, of where you find these problems. And, and now we're sort of like, you know, these, these, these issues are surfacing, right? And, and that's why we're, but it's good sign. It's in a way, it's a good sign to me because it's like we're, we're getting to the point where we have no choice but to, you know, solve these problems in a direct way. We can't retreat back to port bases, right? We have to like, you know, um, we're, we're sort of naked in that regard and we just mm-hmm. have to like fix the problem like head on, right? Um, yeah. Um, this question has been asked by a bunch of people the exact same question, so I'm going to ask it. Um, Russian is the number two spoken language in Foxhole. Why have, has it not been added, but uh, you know, other languages have with less of a population? Um, I don't think we really have any other language in English. Um, there's I, like a couple of menus that there's might a be couple of There's a couple of menus on the, main, on the main menu screen. A couple of buttons have been translated. That was from a long time ago, but um, really, like, the game itself. The game itself is not translated at all. Um, and because a lot of things are changing, um, we, we haven't done that yet. But we, So it's not Russian that we haven't added. It's literally no exactly, language. Exactly. And we, we want to do that at some point. And a couple of things that we did do was quite a long time ago. Uh, it was, I, if, I, if I'm not, correct me if I'm 1. wrong. 1.0, right? Yeah. For, uh, 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 early access, right? It was early access. Yeah. And we, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, we were doing that to actually test basically testing the the translation pipeline mm. the, the localization pipeline yeah uh but the actual localization will definitely happen way closer to 1.0 which yeah. is the release of the game because we we really need to have a stable a, a, more say, things locked down it's, more it's, stable, yeah. let's put it this way um in the team we do have a couple of people that speak a couple uh, like some of the languages that they were translated so it was easy for us just to yeah. test those languages. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, nobody speaks Russian in here. Mm-hmm. So we didn't even... So, yeah. Also, no the, also like, Actually, to talk I about... Speak Russian. No. Oh, oh, surprise. No, I'm nah. just kidding. Um, so, so <laughs> like, to talk about, um, you know... I just had a train of thought, but I lost it, so it's not important. Right, so go, um, go to the next question. Yeah, go to the next question. Yeah. Uh, Taryn Marine asks, uh, I lost the question, the, the exact wording, but uh, are we going to have Dead Harvest again, or is it gone? Dead Harvest, it, well, you know, it wasn't like a cool test and everything, so um, I think... We shall see. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> TBD. I mean, it would be fun. Yeah. I mean... Um, yeah, it would be fun to do. I'm giving my... I'm not, again, I'm not against it. I think see, it would be really, really goddamn fun to do it again. Huh? Well, do you guys want Dead Harvest again? Yeah. That's a good, <laughs> that, I think that's a better question. Throw that question back to you guys. But right? Would we do the same thing? I'm not, we would, uh, you know what? I think I'll say one thing about it. If we were to do it again, we'd want it to be quite different. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Because the whole point of Dead Harvest in the first last year, at least... Was that we like we kind of needed we needed a break, and we took like what what was it like three days four days? W- we said it'd be one day, but it spiraled out into like uh, yeah, several days. Yeah, yeah, it spiraled into like three days, I think, uh, of of work of the whole team. Like the whole team got together yeah. and worked on that harvest, see what we could knock off. Uh, I think that yeah, I agree with you. If we were to do it, we, we would probably want to switch it because we want to have the feeling of being interesting for us as well. Mm, exactly. Right? It's yeah. a fun. It's as fun for us as it is for you guys. Yeah. yeah. People are kind of spamming yes in the chat, so I guess they. Do I want guess that's a yes. Well, then we'll we'll consider. That's cool. Uh, Misco forty eight asks: Is the island rework coming this war or no? Uh, n- no is the answer. Um, oh. it'll no, and to sort of like, come a little bit later. And to sort of speak to, to, to that question a bit, um, I really want you guys to understand our process, right? Like when we don't patch between wars and, um, or at least have any kind of major patches. And when we do make some tweaks, a lot of times all we're really doing is changing um, a bunch of the numbers uh, that we can change we have a bunch of numbers that are built in that can be changed without patching the game. Mm-hmm. So when we're not doing a major update and we're just rolling over into the next war, we either A, 
um, change down those numbers, or B, we roll out very tiny hotfix that nudges a couple of things, right? Um, but we don't, we don't, and now, okay, the third thing that I want to add is that we can change the resources and the starting conditions now because it's a feature we so added. The layout of the war. The starting conditions of the war yeah. um, is something we added in up 26. But we don't, like, because sometimes I hear questions, um, you know, some very like valid questions uh, like, oh, like, why are we changing the layout of the next war when we could like fix X feature or Y feature, right? And mm -hmm. it's because we're not actually patching the game. We're not actually changing anything. We're just turning a bunch of knobs, right? Yeah. Um, really, the only times when we are able to make big changes is um, when, we're, when we're rolling out a legit full, like, you know, this is update 27, this is update 28. Yeah. That's when the changes changes can done. The, the stuff in between, we try to push the envelope. Like sometimes we can squeeze out some m small mid-sized changes in a hotfix. But the, the reason why we can't, why it's hard to do that stuff, because every time we do a release, we have to do like a QA pass. Like yeah. we have to run a full suite of tests to make sure, you know, not like... At least the major things on... The at major least the major things are not broken. And there's a lot of energy that goes into that release. And it's not just a matter of like fixing it and rolling it out. Cause if we did that, the game might just be like, the war just might be completely broken halfway if we don't properly test it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, <laughs> and not broken in the, in the, Oh, resources are scarce kind of way broken yeah. in the, Oh, there's no victory towns now because there's a bug. You know? Yeah, exactly. So it's just, it's really important that, you know, the turnaround time for these things is properly understood. And I think just in terms of like the standard of game development, we're already very fast. Not to like, you know, obviously I'm really biased, but <laughs> you know, a lot of cases like, um, but I don't think that's a result of like us being special or anything. I think it's more of a result of our team size and the fact that we're working on Steam, which is a great platform for um, like early access, right? Yeah. Because of our team size, because of that, we're able to roll out changes pretty quickly um, but, you know, in other parts of the industry with larger teams and, you know, if you're supporting console and other things like oh my that, God, yes. like it's definitely not that fast. Like it, there's a whole process that has to go through every patch, right? Um, Let's put it this way. Uh, the update work is in order to create all the dials that we have to play with. Yeah. And then in between wars, we can change the values of those dials kind of at will. Yeah. Because that doesn't change the game. The, pro, the, the, the hard part was creating them. Um, I'm going to ask two more questions. Cool. Number one, uh, a bunch of people are asking, are we ever going to have gore? Or gore? Like gore, mm -hmm. gore in the game. Like um, guts splitting, like, bursting. Yeah, like, uh, have, like more violence. Well, um, for the ESRB, we already have... Uh, ragdoll bodies and blood so i guess I mean, there's we no have gore. there's literally no reason not to from that perspective i mean the the amount like in the story there's tons of cursing too like it's yeah. it's not like we're we're definitely an m-rated game uh but i think the um i think the Are thing is is we we haven't been rated but we will oh, be yeah. i'm sure we will be there's no way we're not um but uh the um the thing with gore is that like like it be easy to implement like in a really like standard way like just body explosions and stuff but i, I also think like from, from my perspective like uh, it's not something like i'm particularly interested in like glorifying mm -hmm. um the, the it wouldn't if if and when we do something more sort of detailed in terms of like the violence it's not going to be like you know like quake or like mortal Kombat with like 52 rib cages and stuff like that pouring out of characters like it's going to be probably i want it to be a little bit more like uncomfortable for you the player then i do want it to be like cartoony if that makes sense uh, but that's my perspective as the person who makes the effects if obviously there's like another mandate i think like oh, whatever but i think that's that's how I would, that's how i imagine it um what are your thoughts mark no it's i share your thoughts cool last, um, question? last question is from maybar can we get a foxhole prototype server uh, for Steam anniversary of the game on the 27th of July. Foxhole Vanilla? Um, n no. Uh, and the reason is because a lot of that stuff doesn't even exist anymore. Um, I mean, we have... Well, I think we, we could probably I, like scrape I it back up. Have but, we have like, um, code storage of all our code. Well, we might have, like, just to 
just to uh oh we might have the builds actually be clear about that we do have the code though. we can't port the current game to the old content but i think the builds are somewhere whether or not they work or not who knows right <laughs> yeah, yeah. they had a completely different yeah. pipeline to work with the servers mm -hmm. and everything as well right right mm -hmm. so i mean the question is do we want to spend weeks trying to make sure that that those old builds and trying to find the old code and fix it for for something like that you know what to be honest i actually don't know how this is like i actually don't know like it might be very hard or it might be not that hard um i don't know how hard that would be right just to sort of i'm just like walking through the steps in my head it's like we have to find the build we have to run it and make sure that somehow it still works with steam i'm not sure if it would <laughs> right yeah it's some just it's a couple of like hurdles right but um that's i'm just speaking to like whether it's possible not whether or not we actually want to do it right yeah yeah Maybe. especially especially not in four days um is which there, is when it was when it was is asked there for early access uh links still available no because it was like a demo right yeah um i don't know if that's available because I mean, if, if we could just like turn that link once again and say hey if this is the i think something that would work is the original build which wasn't even connected to steam that which one is like you kind of connect a server right yeah that one probably will just work without too much effort but man if you want to play that one you're gonna have to install an untrusted exe on your computer and like um we have to uh no, it's it's it's. <laughs> you know, it, it might it, be a little bit more work. That is, worth it might it. be a fun exercise. I don't know. Maybe I'll look into it for fun. I mean, we'll do we even have a plan for our anniversary? Or did we completely forget that it was coming up? I kind of feel like we forgot. <laughs> yeah, I think Wait, so when too. Is, when is the four days? Goes, four days. Matt, this goes back to like the no nonsense thing. Yeah, you know, we don't have time to celebrate anniversaries. We're working on the game. Yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot it was coming. Uh, so so to that point, I guess no. In four days, we won't have a prototype server up, but. I guess never say never. I guess it's more available than I thought. Wow. I'm just an ignorant person yeah, over here. You know, we'll, we'll like throw one up and have a little, like, a little like, a nostalgia party with like, you know, it's gonna crash. Just running and going. Crash, crash in like crash in five seconds. seconds. There's gonna be like, you know, oh five seconds. Yeah. Terrible UI and you know the the amazing version that oh, you're thinking about. The UI was that one that was like all scratchy and stuff. Yeah, oh, God, I think was... the very first build was really bad too because you couldn't that was vault. Horrible. You couldn't like vault over Foxhole, so people would just block everything with Foxhole. It was, it was terrible. Yeah, because there was those stairs to like to like yeah, the high yeah, ground, right? Stairs. Oh my God, that was really really yeah. god. It was awful. really crazy, and I had to work with like nothing in order to make anything work. It was really tough. Yeah, now it's a lot easier. Um, anyway, to to, to, to that point, uh, we're gonna call the stream to an end. HB, take us away. Yes, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, catch us live every second Tuesday on Twitch that should be slash Foxhole Game. Um, and if you can, you can ask questions uh, live, and we try to answer if you're in there. But if not, uh, send us your question on the comments below, and we are trying to answer at least a good amount of them after we post the video. So we're trying to answer everybody in the comments. Not everybody because we can't, and some questions are not worth it. Uh, but if you don't want to do either of those, join the community. It's uh, discord.gg/foxhole. Um, and we are online, and if your question is nice, we might even answer direct questions. Yes. All right. Also, you can message me on Discord if you want to ask a question for the next stream. If we didn't get to you this time, maybe we will next time, so don't fret. And as always, you can stay foxy. Stay foxy. Stay. I was going to say something else, but that's okay. St nope, you can't. <laughs> it's too late now. I've said the ending. <laughs>